Hello, everyone. It's Wednesday. It's Whiskey Wednesday, and I'm here. If you're here, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, we are everywhere. We are on Facebook. We are on LinkedIn. We are on YouTube. We are even on X, formerly known as Twitter. And uh, there's a reason why we are everywhere today, because today we are going to talk about one of the fastest growing companies in the whiskey industry uh, right now, in the bourbon industry specifically. Um, they, they, they came out of left field, they jumped in, and now they're becoming a household name and even given pride to a little corner of Kentucky known as Bardstown. Uh, I wanted to bring in the brand ambassador. I wanted to bring in the director of development. I want to bring everybody in the house because truly is one of those companies where you feel like you're part of the family when you meet them. They're bringing innovation. They're bringing something different to the market. And I want you all to hear uh, a little more about what they're doing, what they're bringing on the market. So if you're here, do me a favor. Make sure you actually share this, especially if you're on Facebook. Share this with your friend. Share this with your whiskey group. Uh, there's a lot to be known about the sister companies that are kind of one one but the other one but barstown bourbon company um it's here today that's what we're interviewing but also they are behind green river whiskey company as well so we have a two for today i always love this because i love talking to all side of whiskey uh, and especially when there are women involved, I actually even get more excited. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the team from Barstown Bourbon Company. Hello, team. Hi. Hey, great to be here, Jack. Thanks for having us. No, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Uh, you guys are like, I, I call it, uh, I have a few friends in the whiskey industry. So, when, when I get to interview my own friends, I'm, I get excited. Uh, I wanted to bring you all in for a while. But after the Barstown acquisition of uh, Green River, I thought, you know what? What a momentous opportunity to actually talk about what Barstown is trying to change in the industry and trying to bring to, to the market. But before we get and jump into the weeds, uh, let's give you a chance to introduce yourself. Awesome. Thank you, Jack. So I, I'm Dan Calloway. I run product development for Bardstown Bourbon Company and Green River. And I'm honored today to be joined by Jasmine Weaver, our incredible national brand ambassador. So well, Dan just and, introduced me, but today is actually my one year anniversary with the company. And this is my first ever podcast. Woo -woo! So I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, uh, Jazz, you, you'll be surprised, but some of us knew that already because we follow you on Instagram and you're really excited for it. You know, I always say it is, uh, it, there is a lot to be said about a company if an employee is excited, especially in the whiskey industry, is excited to say this is my one-year company. It must be an interesting experience. So since, you know, Dan has been there for forever, since right. I've known Barstown Bourbon Company, I've known Dan. I will ask you the question. How does you feel like to be a Barstown Bourbon Company employee? So it is this incredible feeling because I really feel like we are truly innovating in a way that others might not be. And our collaborations are super exciting. I come from a background of bartending. So the fact that we have so many different flavors in all of our bottles is always exciting to me. Which is which is actually one of the things that uh, impressed me. You know, the Barstown Bourbon Company in Barstown itself is impressive as a building, but nothing was as impressive as, as that old fashioned that you get when you walk into Barstown Bourbon Company and they serve you that old fashioned age and curacao cask. That was my first impression of, oh my God, what in the heck are these people doing here? Um, being a whiskey company but having this amazing bar that you almost want to come and drink at the bar and forget about the whiskey itself. So uh, it says a lot uh, about a company. If uh, if an employee or whomever worked for the company go, hey, I spent a year here and I can't wait for the next year. I've seen your post on, on Instagram, so I'm cheating here. But <laughs> if you don't follow Jasmine, make sure you follow her on Instagram. She's hilarious. She's funny. And uh, shout out to Barstown Bourbon Company uh, for breaking the stereotype 
Um, we need more black women in the industry, and you guys are totally bringing that into the industry. People talk about it, but not a lot of people actually put their, their money worth their mouth is. So, Jasmine, I'm, I'm glad you're in the industry, and uh, we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to attack. You know, I remember it's been two years ago when I, I spoke to someone at Barstown on, the, on an interview, so there's so much to catch up on. I'm, I'm so excited to ask so many questions. So, before even we get into the whiskey, the bar, the Barstown bourbon house experiment. Mm. You guys have made the talk of the town from Forbes magazine to Esquire magazine. Everyone talk about probably the most unique experience in the whiskey industry. And I, I know unique when I see one. Look at me. I'm pretty unique. But I knew unique when I see one. Can you tell people a little bit about this crazy yet I mean, creative idea that you guys brought on the market that put everybody to shame, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I start? Yeah, please. So because each one of our bottles is so different, we wanted to have a room for each one to really highlight the, the differences and uniqueness. Um, and we wanted each one of those rooms to be its own immersive experience. So having a a four square room that really celebrates our collaboration series, getting Dan behind the bar in a discovery room so that people can see just how many different blends uh, happen. Um, yeah, ahead. no, and, and Jack, you, you nailed it, right? Why, why would we build this distillery in this small corner of Kentucky? Like you said, that corner of Kentucky is the bourbon capital of the world. And we wanted to build our distillery surrounded by the history but bring a modern take. And, and it's interesting because House of Bardstown is a new thing for us, but it's still our core modern tenants that go back to 2016. Innovation, collaboration, transparency, it's on display throughout the experience. So what House of Bardstown is, is bringing our little corner of Kentucky, the bourbon capital of the world, to the nation. I, I, I think you're not even giving it enough credit. <laughs> I, I, I think you're simplifying this thing. So yeah. I'm not going to ruin the experience for y'all. But what I'm going to tell you is make sure you go to barstown.com and make sure you sign up for the newsletter and make sure, right, you actually sign up. If that email comes to you right now, I think they have three cities. They did one in Kentucky. They did one in, they did one in Nashville, I believe. And then there's another one happening as well. Yep. Now, if you ever been to a speakeasy, Think about a speakeasy on steroids, right? <laughs> like that's how I felt. Every single detail was thought of when you experienced the, the Barstown house. I, I, Danny, I'm saying you're not giving it enough credit because yeah. it's an experience of a lifetime. It is. You think about a speakeasy, the mother of all speakeasies. You walk in and you got 10 other speakeasy in one speakeasy. <laughs> and then you flip that around. And before you get there, you feel, you feel already like you're family. You're given a key that can only open the door to get into the house. I don't care who you are, from funk music to Afrobeat to classic music to jazz lounge, you will find yourself. Do you know how hard it is to make every single person that walk into a house feel welcome? That's how I felt. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I'm like, there's no way, and I don't believe anybody have done this in the industry yet. So if you're watching this or watching the recast, I challenge you to try to insert yourself into that experience. It's something to be told. It's almost like when you leave, you don't want to tell anybody. Because yeah. it's like the best thing that ever happened to you, and you don't want to tell anybody. I spent four and a half hours, and it felt like I was only there for an hour. It's incredible. Well, thank you so, so much. How how's you know the, the the house of Barstown is the best experience so far in America, even in the world right now, that truly bring whiskey culture to life for any whiskey lover from all the way from the other side of the country to anywhere else is a is a one time is a lifetime experience to try 
I don't want to think about how you have to convince someone to sign that check for you guys to be able to come with this crazy idea. That's all I kept thinking when I was there. I'm like, how did they convince a VP or somebody to go, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's yeah. do it. It, it's just amazing and shout out to your to the maid the actor that you guys hire for the maid Incredible. She made the evening probably one of the most eclectic evenings so i'm telling y'all right now how's the bar style if you don't remember anything out of this interview <laughs> remember how's the bar style yeah and you need to make sure you actually make this part of a lifetime experience for you to to try so it's awesome now that i'm done talking about this experience that i i went through and I felt like I was I was rejuvenated and made me believe that whiskey culture is still about family and about having a good time again. And karaoke, all I can say is karaoke room. What did you sing for karaoke? You know what? I couldn't. I couldn't because it, I didn't have time. Right. I, like, if you stay too long in one room, you feel like you're missing out something else. The Caribbean tiki bar was there and there was the jazz lounge the red the red room jazz lounge was there meanwhile there was people in lab court that made me feel like i needed to stop in and do an experiment <laughs> meanwhile upstairs there is a dj that was trying to funk it up for me so i started dancing i'm like is, is there's not enough time so like i said i don't care who you are what you're like young old woman man you know, in the middle, non-binary, you will find your way, something you will like in that house. That's awesome. And the hardest thing in life is to bring everybody into one room and make them feel like they're all connected. And you guys have succeeded at that. And I cannot wait for this to become a thing for people. I'm sure somebody's going to copy you guys in about a year, but I, I can clearly put on the record that Barstown Bourbon Company was the first to do it. And you guys did it right. So. Well, it's just the beginning. Look for many more of them. If you want to specifically see that experience, it's houseofbardstown.com. And you can see when we announce future dates, cities. Uh, you said it better than I ever could, Jack, but we're so excited. You know what? I'm going to display it right now so people know where to go and find it. But it's House of Barstown. Yeah, bars. If I can, if I can actually speak English. Bars. <laughs> House and Barstown. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Is is yeah. right here. Is already is already loading. House of Barstown. Right here. Sign up right there and get on the email list. You can you can get on the email. And it is as exclusive as it comes, but is also probably the best exclude the most exclusive yet coolest party you ever think of. No Diddy. But mm. definitely the best party you ever you ever been into. Right here. I'm displaying it right now. Right here, oh, houseofbarstown.com. Awesome. You you cannot miss it. Just type it, and you you get to be on. Awesome. I promise you, it's gonna be there. Now, let's. There's two major thing I wanted to bring into the interview. I didn't want to talk about your core line lineup because for me, you guys already have proven on the market that your core lineup either is the discovery or. You know, or anything that you guys are putting up in your core lineup, you you spend the last probably five years already convincing us that you can make good whiskey, right? That mm -hmm. that is not a thing. But one thing I wanted to highlight is what you guys are doing on the market that others are not doing, and that is first I want to talk about collaboration. There's no one that collaborate like Barstown, True. German company, none. And I, I challenge any company to step up to the plate and say how much they collaborate. It almost make you the, the love child of every company out there because I don't think anybody, when you when I posted that I was interviewed Boston Bourbon Company, I had other distilleries liking and commenting on this, which tells me pr pretty much that you guys are forming relationship with people outside of the realm of Boston Bourbon Company. But how many collaboration can you say you guys have as, well, as of today on on the on the books that are that are completed historically probably close to 25 30 but it starts you reference in the beginning our bar i would say ours is the only distillery bar in kentucky where you can walk in and see every brand not just our collaborative partners it's the entire history of whiskey on display 
Uh, we celebrate, we collaborate, we learn from each other. Uh, these partnerships we've created in barrel aging, whether it's Foursquare or Goose Island um, or some of the best wineries, it comes down to brands we're excited about. Uh, these, aren't, these aren't contracts. We don't pay anything uh, to get the rights to, to co-brand. It's just two, two companies that want to join together and create something. And we found this avenue um, through co-branding and making new flavors. And it's just authentic and honestly a fun way that we can make, make new, new whiskeys. I, and, and I tell you what, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite impressive. You guys have collaborated with, I mean, names that people can only imagine, right? Um, but I feel like you guys have also introduced your partners to the world because for all people, they may know O Carter as a brand, but they didn't know that Carter Sellers is probably one of the high, highest rated wine in the world. For, so for you guys to actually have that collaboration, I, I remember somebody asked me one time, I was like, so is it, are they collaborating with old carter or is it no i say carter sellers they are they have a wine they're like oh i never heard of it yeah. now it creates that that thing you guys have done it with uh, uh goose island right you guys have put a, a a uno reverse right goose island usually use barrels to age their stout you guys like uno reverse we're gonna use your stout barrels and then we're gonna actually age our whiskey in so tell me Tell me, tell me, tell me about collaboration you've been proud of because you have been very, you yourself, Dan, have been very instrumental in those collaborations. Yes. So tell I me how you're picking your, your those those brand and, you know, how does this collaboration come to light when no one is trying to do that? Everybody's like, mine, mine, mine. This is mine. Yeah. You know, how are you doing it? I Well, I, I came from the wine world. And I came from the cocktail world, restaurant world, music world. And I've always been about partnering and working as a team to elevate and make a common goal. In all honesty, every single one of our collaborations, their Instagram messages, their, their visits on site to Napa. Mark Carter's a friend uh, with the Nonino family. I, I've, been a, I've been to Turin, been to Northern Italy, uh, just just visited and, and and forming these relationships they're all just brands that we're excited about authentic and, and just want to create something special so these will never be our, our flagship or our core but they're a way that we can push boundaries through innovation so the way we find it is we sit around and nothing at bardstown is ever one person in a room right so it may be jazz myself our executive chef uh, our marketing team our distilling team looking at what we can do together and uh, look for that next partner that excites us. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I tell you what, I, my head hurt just thinking about all the collab that you guys had. It's, it's, I'm like, there's no way you, you must be the most likable guy in the whiskey industry because everybody, <laughs> I, I don't think anybody, did anybody ever say no to you? Uh, you know, I, some took some convincing. For example, Four Square Rum. They had never collaborated with anyone, right? It had never happened. And you think mm -hmm. about the level of trust, right? Richard Seal, who built Foursquare, uh, for him to let us use his branding, the Foursquare branding, the logo, his barrels, the flavor, with no payment, no contract, there's a gradual trust. And the way uh, that one came about was actually a relationship with his, his partner, Gail Seal, uh, talking, messaging, getting, you know, know like, Gail, Gail, is, Gail is a nice, nice, nice lady. Incredible. So it's just, honestly, I approach that one as a fan and saying, look at what we've done in the past. I want to bring what we've done with this collaborative series and celebrate Foursquare Rum. And we can guarantee that we will elevate and celebrate your brand in an authentic, really cool way that, that, uh, that people can gravitate towards. Um, there they are. You're running them. I mean, the, the co-branding is just, yeah, that's coming. That's, this that's one cool. is the, the most I'm, I'm jealous about because I, by the time it was out, by the time it was already done. Oh, no. Well, so that one has not come out yet. That oh, is that, that's what I thought. I'm like, I'm looking for it. And it's like, no, oh, it's not no, there. No. And I'm like, that, uh, that is under wraps. That is coming soon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, 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 then again, 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 to, speaking of innovation, that's that that is is impossible. Yeah. Indian whiskey and bourbon. Yeah. Coming and together. Aisha Cunningham, uh, you know, who does does all the work at Amru. He came out on site to to Bardstown and uh, I've been incredibly deep into the flavors they're creating and just have wanted to do something with them. So again, just, just you, you are, you are literally, you, uh, I would tell you right now, you are given uh, whiskey a new name and uh, I'm loving it. You're not trying to be like anybody else. And that's what I tell people not trying to be like anybody else is what makes whiskey beautiful. A lot of people try to be like somebody else uh, trying to copy others. And I don't think he works as much. Yeah. Right. And all this, I can't stress enough how much it takes the team. You know, I have ideas, but if there's one thing you said, I've been at Barstown forever. I just hit six years. <laughs> the gift, I think every year I learn how much it takes a team to get something done. Uh, Correct. It's finance, uh, marketing, operations. The reason Bardstown is successful is because we genuinely work together as a team. It's it's like no other company in, in spirits right now. Well, I lost you, Jack. Or he lost us. I was going to say, you right think on it's the team. Him. <laughs> I'll do another one where I say it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. All right, I think we're back. You're back? Uh, oh, okay, did you hear me yeah, say? I was technical difficulties there. <laughs> awesome, no, I was just saying what I've learned in my time is that everything we do is because of the team and we just have this unified, awesome approach and a team mentality to get this done. Okay, I am uh, I would tell you right now, um, I'm impressed. Uh, you you are not like, you. like I said, you're not doing what what uh you know we are you are not doing things like anybody else and i love that you is unique in every way shape or form and there's nothing you know there's nothing to be said but yeah congratulations uh keep doing what y'all are doing um before we start tasting uh i want to talk about the the discover series um that's 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 that is kind of part of your flagship in what barstown uh, you know puts out um yearly or at least twice a year sometime is the discover series because i truly believe that i don't think anything comes out of barstown that is better than as far as flagship that is better than the discover series is my favorite is a is what I, i've enjoyed but let's talk about the latest release of the discover series which is um which is the discover uh, ele the discover 11 right the, the, the latest release of it uh, tell me a little bit about this before we go into partnership uh, on on you know on new things that you guys are putting on the market based on Discovery Eleven. Yeah, um, Jazz, take it away. Yes, yes, please tell us about Discovery Eleven. Yeah, no, Discovery is the celebration of the art of blending. We really wanted to demonstrate that a blended whiskey can be a thoughtful and curated thing. Uh, Dan goes out, he finds these amazing small batches that have something wonderful about them, whether it's a nose, whether it's a mouthfeel, whether it's a flavor, and then puts them in com together in combinations that make really knockout bottles. Uh, Discovery 11 is actually exciting to me because when I first came on board, um, shortly after I started, Dan invited me into his office and was like, hey, taste these two things. And they were just unmarked glasses. Um, and those were some of the first tastes of the blends that he was thinking about. So I got to see it from its birth until its bottling, which is so cool for someone who's a fan of whiskey. Um, but also this is a really exciting bottle because it's the first time that Bardstown has been old enough to be part of the blend. Uh, every time we make a discovery series, it is a one and done. The next time is a totally different flavor profile. There's never anything younger than six years. So Bardstown Bourbon, finally six years old. Finally, yeah, finally six years old. Well, we're starting to incorporate our own bourbon off our right. stick into the discovery series, which is really exciting. Um, uh, according small, to yeah. what? 
uh, according to this, we have 73 uh, Kentucky, 13 year, 21 mm -hmm. Kentucky, 10 year, and finally 6% of it uh, is six year Barstown yep. uh, whiskey. So yeah, exactly. And that 6% Barstown was this experimental bourbon we did where we went straight into French oak and I was, I was tasting it. Our, our uh, director of distillation, Nick Smith is excited about it. And I just wanted to, to kind of work that into the blend. There's, there's strong cherry notes, red fruit, almost like a watermelon uh, on this. And then uh, just roundness depth. It does have a pop as you're hitting in the, you know, mid one hundreds here for proof, uh, but just a beautiful fruit forward bourbon that that is um 59.05 uh, mm -hmm. uh abv i mean the shit i mean nice when we talking about uh some cherry bomb this is this is cherry definitely bomb. it with some nice nice spice baking spice coming through on the top yeah it's a, it's it's a great pour and it's fortunately uh being really well received in the public which just just makes us excited and proud and like jazz said every release is unique and different discovery 12 will be out in the fall and we'll just you know keep trying to innovate and elevate this uh this blend yeah you can definitely taste the 13 years old as well because those oak notes are coming through right in the mid palate you can it shows its maturity yeah, the maturity of the whiskey and the blend as well. I have to say it's coincidental. I got a text 10 minutes before this podcast started from Dixon Deadman, you know, Kentucky Owl. Yes, uh, I, know, I know Dixon. And he says, what is this? Hey, what's this? It's selling like crazy at Specs in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, fortuitous. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely. It, 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 it has what I like to, it has some grown folks business in this taste. <laughs> um, yeah, that oak note is there, is really solid. It does taste like, a, it, def, it definitely tastes much, much older than, yeah. than even a 13. It tastes, it tastes grown. Yeah. The nose on this is probably, I like to call it the true bourbon drinker nose those pop of oak and spice notes coming through. You can't, you cannot go wrong with this nose and very, 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 very stepping different from your regular discoveries, mm -hmm. which were more mellow, you know, mellow in, but more flavor profile up. I love that you guys are doing always something different. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Yay. Oh yeah. I'm, yeah, enjoy that one, my man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize with our process, one of the coolest things is we were the first out of the gate to have a restaurant, full service restaurant bar attached to the distillery. What came with it? We were trying to build a world uh, class hospitality program. What came with it? The gift is an executive chef, correct? Rich director. All these different viewpoints, right? It's not just a distiller or a blender. Um, we can have someone that is cooking all day long look at our whiskeys or Correct. someone making cocktails and have their perspective on it and um i think you're seeing that on display as we continue to put out these releases uh, uh, absolutely and you get a national brand ambassador oh, <laughs> with a you know the cocktail you know background uh, yeah Mini palettes so jazz, together. What is your favorite collab so far mm. that you've tasted? So my favorite is actually the four square. I am obsessed with it. And those rum notes, those rum notes are 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 amazing. Absolutely. And so because I come from a cocktailing background, um, tasting menus and pairing those with beverages. I had been using some of the Bardstown collabs as cocktails and people were always like, oh my gosh, that's sinful to do that mm -hmm. with a bottle. But I'm like, well, if you have a limited amount of time to have the best ever version of a single cocktail, why wouldn't you do it? And right. the Foursquare collab makes an amazing Hemingway daiquiri just out of this world. It's awesome. You know, you know, Dan, I'm actually very sad because really? I feel like you don't know me well. 
because I, I, yeah. I literally ravaged through all the samples and I said, he didn't send my favorite. Ah, oh, you know what I'm gonna do, Jack? Shame. I'm gonna he, I'm gonna double down. He you. he he did not send my favorite because gonna, you know, uh, you, you know, you know. I, I feel I I really feel like Brandon got you beat because every time I say I'm sad, Brandon says I have something for you, and, and he makes sure what I miss every I'm, time I'm in town is that beautiful old fashioned. I put it on ice. I mm. sit outside, and I just. I, I, it goes with food, it goes straight, and it goes even more perfectly with a cigar. It's probably mm. the old fashioned of any occasion. And I tell everybody that I have not seen an old fashioned that can beat Barstown Bourbon Company old fashioned, you know, barrel aged old fashioned. I've got you covered, Jack. I just made a he note. He literally <laughs> pulled up his to do list. <laughs> <laughs> put, it, put it in. Like every time I get a packet from, from, from Barstown uh, Bourbon Company, I'm like, Wait, wait, is is my old fashioned? Because usually it lasts me two days. It's like an everyday drinker for me. If I lived in Barstown, I'd probably stop in every day before I go home and pick, <laughs> pick like have a glass before. It's it's just that good. But it's it's coming your way. Yes, I appreciate it. Let's talk about uh something that you guys are doing at Barstown Bourbon Company before we jump on the other side. Uh let's talk about. Single barrels. Mm. So apparently, um, but before we even talk about single barrels, uh, I know you cannot give specifics, but one thing you guys are doing is you have been helping a lot of brand actually start their debut on the market. Mm -hmm. I actually even received a package yesterday from someone who said, hey, I have a new whiskey coming out. I would love for you to taste it. It's from Barstown Bourbon Company. They're the one who helped me set up this whiskey. And I think he, I think you, you'll be proud of it. And I say, really? And I'm like, that would be a question I need to ask today. Yeah. How many people, I mean, I, I know at least six brands that use Barstown Bourbon Company as their sourcing place. But how many brands right now have you guys helped launch? Well, Jack, I'm so glad you asked because something I wanted to make sure I touched on is um, at our core is this sense of collaboration and helping other brands. No matter how much Bardstown Bourbon Company grows, we will always take pride in distilling for others and take care of our customers. Right. And we celebrate them. We, we use them in our cocktail menus. We sell them. In our retail store, I just, as I was walking up the stairs to do this podcast, uh, ran into Jason from Buzzard's Roost, who had a barrel pick today, and they, we can post their barrel picks. Um, we value that, distilling for others, and, and you asked the question, a number, say well over 30 at this point, that, that we've launched uh, Nate5280, one yeah. of my Every, uh, everybody's here to see you to see you are a very you are a very very popular man ah uh, i don't you, know you, but, uh, you are you are a popular man <laughs> everybody everybody's stopping by to say hello that's <laughs> awesome. uh actually turner, turner from uh from uh from uh, rolling forces here saying uh, that. that's awesome uh <laughs> nate tell him we had 5280 on site today with argonauts out of denver it was awesome um but yeah we no matter how big bardstown gets as a brand we're going to celebrate and value our 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 partner uh, distilleries. So we want to we want to see them succeed. We're actually I'm right here uh, on Main Street on Whiskey Row. I'm going to give you a little little shot here. Jazz and I are hanging out on Whiskey Row. Yeah, and there are so that many. That is that is uh, that is actually for people that do not know. Um, it used to be when you get into Louisville, you have to drive to Barstown to actually go experiment. Uh, what Barstown has to offer. Uh, was it what? Is it about 90 days-ish that you guys are open? Yeah, about that. What would you yeah. Say? We opened late October. Okay. Um, so I would say about, about yeah, about five months in that you guys, that's op open. And now you don't necessarily have to drive to Barstown. You can actually, uh, they are all part of the, I, I like to call it the whiskey roll trail, uh, where if you come in, um, as you keep going there, if you see them, you probably turn on your right, you see Mictors and they're, they're right on the corner. So most people just walk there, 
now you can actually stop in and have that experience even if you don't have time to drive anywhere else i always say the best part of louisville is you don't need anything if somebody drop you at a hotel on main street you'll be just fine visiting every everybody so now barstown is also part of that so for all of you guys you can update your itinerary you can also stop at barstown if you're if you're in louisville and um and and stop by and say hello tell them hood summer they send me he said i need to come bring something here maybe they will chase you out maybe they will give you a discount <laughs> we don't know but uh they are part of uh part of louisville now and which is which is a big deal a lot of people are doing it not a lot of people are successful at it and i, I came and i visited a place only thing i would tell you about that place is you need to go in the back and look at the carpet shag slash uh painting yeah on the wall and you have to visit the bathrooms that's all i can say <laughs> everything else you have to go discover later but again when i say this is about an experience and barstown is making it about experience that's what they're doing is a must visit for your own curiosity that wow. that's what i would say but let's talk about single barrels that's also something new that you guys are bringing on the market how are these single barrel coming and what what are making these single barrels different and are they blend of other things or are they just 100 percent bars down juice oh no yeah. Go ahead. okay yeah so we have our core bourbon our origin single barrel which is which is our white label bourbon but this year we are launching something special and i put a little uh surprise in your in your sample package oh yeah Oh yeah. yeah. Which is brand new 2020. Brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new. That is in the <laughs> sample bottle. I pulled that directly uh, from the single barrel. Okay. This is our origin rye, which as some of you may know, is finished in cherry wood barrels. Mm -hmm. So these are zebra, American oak cherry wood with an infrared char to reduce the tannin. Mm -hmm. what we're doing is releasing a single barrel program limited um about 100 barrels for the for the entire nation um of cast strength single barrel offerings of our rye finished in cherry wood barrels uh, Ooh, so i get to be it. yeah it is christmas it is christmas <laughs> for me i really get to try something unique and something different um exciting thing about these barrels that they are custom made just for us by the west virginia great barrel company it is one of which the is a company you guys did have a collaboration with yes uh they are the most technologically advanced cooperage that exists currently a lot of the machinery that they have in the cooperage only exists there in the world because they custom made it for themselves so it's super exciting to have barrels that nobody else is getting and our single barrel program, we're doing a couple of different um, toasts, but also a couple of different durations in the wood. So when you're trying four samples, it they're drastically different and it's such a cool experience. I've sat in on it a couple of times, um, just, just, you know, to taste, to try. <laughs> so what you're getting there is a 95% rye, 5% barley. So you're five, five, okay, yeah. the, the magic number of rye exactly tons of that that green tea spearmint dill but then you're going to get this sweetness that, like to call it mint drizzle lavender <laughs> okay and then you're going to get all this roundness and sweetness from the cherry wood the extra oak the uh so you're getting that extra wood sugar mm -hmm. and then the cherry wood brings this completely unique element that really ba balances the herbal nature okay perfect so yeah you can look for these single barrels uh in a few months we're just starting to do the picks now but they're currently not on market but coming very soon about how old are they six years everything's at least six years in these mm. just like the uh origin bourbon mm. Okay. Mm hmm. What's the proof on this? Well, it varies. So you're going to see them ranging everywhere from 115 to probably 130. 
depending on um, where they uh, where they were stored. Obviously, the higher floors, sixth, seventh floor, you're going to get up into that one high one twenty range. Lower floors can can drop down. Went into barrel at one twenty. Do you know? Do you know what this rise? The ninety five five. No, this rye you just sent me. Oh yeah, what's that? This is a we need to talk rye. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I'm telling you, like this is a we got some important to talk about rye. It's it the depth of flavor is awesome. actually astonishing, right? I'm, I'm using all the English words I know. The depth of flavor is astonishing. The, the the nose doesn't even do it justice, but I'm pretty sure what is throwing me off right now is the sherry, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, right that, that sherry is literally making the taste note actually fluctuate. It feel like a, a symphony in my mouth. It's like a symphony in my mouth. It's like it's going back and forth to the point where I'm confused. Like it's, I'm... That's awesome, Jack. What a kind compliment. Thank yeah, you. That's incredible, Jack. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I have some news to give to someone that I know for sure they have to sit on it, I'm pouring them this. <laughs> <laughs> I am pouring them this because that's you know what? I feel like everybody has done it already, right? Everybody has done it. Every 95.5 have been used and abused. Totally. And a lot of people, um, I don't think there is, you know, when when I, when I sit here and I go 95.5 is my favorite type of rye, about seven to eight, you know, right about six to eight years old is perfect. You know, you can enjoy it, good rye. And then you say, no, hold my beer. Let me show you how we can take the 95.5 rye and put another twist on it. If you are a 95.5 rye lover, either from, you know, any any 95.5 rye out here in this, on the market, I challenge you, especially if you're a Manhattan drinker. Mm, makes it awesome, Manhattan. This rye, I'm going to hold with dear life. And when it comes out, I'm definitely going to own a bottle because this right here, it is, yeah. It's gonna be a trouble. It's gonna be a troublemaker. <laughs> That's why he didn't send you any of your favorite thing. He knew he was sending you your new favorite. <laughs> you know thing. what? You know what, girl? You know exactly how to twist the story. No wonder <laughs> you're a brand ambassador. I, I'm adding like to that. the list, Jack. I'm gonna get you a full once they bottle, because none of it's <laughs> bottled yet. I'm gonna send you a nice full finished 750 ml. It, it's. I'm telling. I'm telling you right now. I don't know. What is it that is going to be out there in the market? But if it's anything, because obviously being single barrels, people like something a little different. But I, I don't know. Make sure all I would tell you guys is make sure you launch this at least two years before you decide to take out Green River and turn it into a single barrel. Because <laughs> otherwise, they're going to be they're going to be some some fights in Ohio. <laughs> That's what I know. Cheers. Um, Thanks, Jay. I am behoove, confused, and uh, intrigued at the same time by this ride. I, I don't think I like y'all right now. I don't, I don't like y'all right now. <laughs> you know what? The best thing about that single barrel is the empty glass. The nose on the empty glass is like nothing else. Yeah. I love that aroma. It's so you good. What, what I'm going to do is. Once I have a pour sometime this week again, I'm going to leave the glass like I used to. I'm going to come back the next day and see what <laughs> I pick up from it. That's how I put a, anything yeah. to the test. And this right here, I'm, I am, um, yeah, you guys totally innovation check. This definitely is, is, making, is making its round. Awesome. So, the news of the century that came about is you guys have acquired another operation. And yeah. that operation is called Green River. Uh, tell me about how that happened. 
Yeah, I'd lo- uh. no, you tell me how that happened. <laughs> She's like, I wasn't there when it happened. You no. tell me how it happened. <laughs> um, I think it was going out, right, and looking at the brands. There aren't many grain to glass, authentic, incredible Kentucky bourbon brands. They they don't just come available to be sold, right? Mm-hmm. So this was a unicorn opportunity. A distillery that dates back to 1885 um, has been running. uh, Some of the greatest bourbon ever made in the 70s came off this still. So you've got Owensboro, Kentucky. Green River Bourbon is the pride of Owensboro. And the opportunity came available to purchase this brand. And initially, we were looking at it for our our distillation partners Mm -hmm. right we could we could have more kentucky bourbon to supply them with because we were sold out for 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 five years bardstown bourbon company sold out we wanted to help our partner brands grow so we were looking at, at, at adding distillation capacity but then we saw this brand that came available and fell in love with actually a right at owensboro dsp ky10 and for all of you guys who don't understand um is if you look at this bottle uh, on uh the dsp uh is pretty much your certificate you're given as a distiller mm-hmm. and if you look on a bottle and you look at a dsp number the lower the dsp number means that it's as old and ingrained in Kentucky culture as it is. So for someone to own a DSP 10, mm-hmm. that is a big deal. And yep. that's the bur- you know, the bourbon nerd in me is who's talking, but exactly. that is a big deal to actually own a DSP 10. So yep. it's those those names are not are not out there anymore. So yes, yep. this is this is definitely a big deal. Yeah. So this this, like you said, it embraces the history of Kentucky bourbon. Uh, It was originally known as the whiskey without a headache. And then after prohibition, you weren't able to make medicinal claims. So it switched to the the whiskey without regrets. And we've kind of leaned in. We have a great bar game where you can come and and you can see in your bottle, there's a little opening. We call it shoot the shoe, the horseshoe. Oh my God. And you scoot the coin right under there. Every freaking whiskey event I've been to, I am... Yeah, I, we there are. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I am. I am tired of Green River <laughs> making me lose all the chances that I can actually. I never can make it, and is I'm annoyed yeah. because I love the game, but every time I go and try to, I, I have. <laughs> I don't have that coordination to shoot into it. A beautiful bottle that obviously yeah. shows the shoot here, but uh, you guys acquire it, mm-hmm. and. I mean, Green River was known to actually make great whiskey to begin with. I, I, did you guys change anything at all? Um, well, I, I like to compare it to like a uh, similar to a cast iron still, right? Those flavors, that authenticity is going to remain. What we were able to do, and, and all credit in the world to two, two, well, to the whole team, but Justin Willett, who oversees all our operations for Bardstown and Green River, Aaron Harris, the master distiller at uh, Green River going in, basically just adding a little bit of, uh, of uh, modern innovation, cleaning up the process a bit. It still uses the natural uh, well water from Owensboro. Mm-hmm. All the character is there. It's just putting in a little bit of efficiency into the process is, is really where we came in. Now, the latest product on the market is the Green River Rye. Yeah, this was a... Uh, I wrote I wrote about it. I reviewed it. I uh you know what? Let me have a let me have a picture <laughs> because I truly believe somewhere this is probably one of the best rye of 2024. Uh it's on my LinkedIn. I, I, I wrote I wrote a whole article um asking people what in the heck is Barstown Bourbon Company doing uh with Green River. Because whatever they're they're putting in this rye, tell me about the rye. I, I'm, I'm I'm I am I am I was thoroughly 
thoroughly impressed by this rye. And well, I, I don't think there's a the consensus on whiskey, you know, on whiskey internet is that this is the best rye of 2024. The, the one thing I can say is sometimes when I blend something, it's it's a difficult thing and, and you're trying to put things together. This it was just like the cards falling into place. So this rye is four year up to six year, different lots being put together. And again, everyone's had a 95.5 rye. I wanted to make something a little more unique. We upped the proof to 95 compared to 90. It's got a little more richness and roundness than your classic, uh, your standard 95.5. And it was really just so cool to find these lots that were still classic, but had all the flavor in the world. And let's keep in mind, this is also affordable. Mm -hmm. This is probably, this is the one thing I had to bring people's attention to. A lot of new rye that are coming on the market, uh, it, once they're 95.5 rye and they've been around over, you know, over four years, try to hit the $50 market. Exactly. This rye is still affordable. Yeah. I think, I think it's 39. 30, 30, well, we've got an MSRP. The coolest thing about Green River, authentic grain to glass, five-year age profile. So four-year to six-year bourbon and rye in the bottle, all of it $34.99. And, 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 and like I said, $39.99 is where I saw it on the market. And I was like, I will, I will, I will buy that any day, any day. Buying a, 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 a 95.5 rye averaging, you know, five years old and, and under 40 bucks, yeah, give me that any day. Give me give, just just give it to me. Um, let's talk about the other products out there. You, you 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 they obviously have a bourbon, and they have a weedy bourbon. I never had a chance to try the bourbon. The the rye is what I was stuck on for a while. Obviously, my market is a little limited. So um, tell me about the bourbon. What what is what is the specs on a bourbon? Yeah. So the bourbon is uh, we, classic profile. Jazz, we, we, we don't want to keep you outside of the conversation. Feel free oh, to no. jump in any time. No, no, no. I would love to have Dan talk <laughs> about the Green River part of things. So Jazz I uh, runs all things Bardstown Bourbon Company, national brand ambassador. But the coolest thing she's done with Green River, I think, mm -hmm. with, with her viewpoint and what speaks to what Green River, it's so flexible. What it can do is cocktails and, and the bourbon, the weed and the rye is just so versatile in these cocktails. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, for the bourbon, you've got 70 corn, 21% rye, 9% barley. So a uh, uh, higher rye content that's going to come through. The weeded recipe is exactly flipped. So it makes it easy to remember. 70 corn, 21% wheat. 9% barley. Easiest way to remember it, I always tell people, wheat is sweet, rye is dry, right? Cool. So if you have that smooth, soft sipper, you want to go with the Green River Weeded. It's really perfect. I, 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 I love it as a daily sipper for people just getting into bourbon. It's so fruit forward, peach, apricot, approachable. Mm -hmm. And then this bourbon, uh, classic bourbon with rye as a secondary grain, is right. just a killer in cocktails. But I really so, like it in um, a whiskey sour. Mm, <laughs> mm, yeah. Mm. But okay. uh, Owensboro, Kentucky, it's about two hours from Louisville. It's so worth the drive. If you want to come see it in person, it's kind of the western gate to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And if you come see the distillery, it's like you're going back in time. There's so many rooms that are essentially... You can tour, especially behind the scenes that are untouched, right? And, and you can see this authentic Kentucky history. And for for the people that, uh, if you're wondering, if you want to know more about about Green River, uh, I'll put the I'll display the the website. Yeah, uh, you know it's. I will tell you right now, uh, Green River, Green River for me, Green River whiskey is. Uh, you guys couldn't have made a better decision uh, buying this distillery. Uh, calling it whiskey without regret is true because price is right. Yep. Price is perfect. And it's almost like if you are a new beginner, if you just start into whiskey and you're not sure and mm -hmm. want to try something, this is probably one of those things that are not scary for you to try. 
and you can definitely try it without going hey you know at least i didn't waste you know 50 bucks or 100 bucks on a bottle before i actually don't know if it's going to be great or not so it's, it's a perfect um, bottle to bring to a party you know uh, anywhere it is it, i think it should be called the everyday bottle exactly. it's 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 affordable it's straight to the point is I'm, I'm loving it i, I think it's, it's still good enough yeah. um tell me do i hear that there are going to be some green river single barrels absolutely yeah we're uh we're rolling yeah okay yeah we're uh we're doing a bunch this year and then um down in owensboro so you'll see those hit the market and it's the only way to get the green river bourbon profile at that full proof right mm -hmm. at that cast strength some of them are up the mid 120s and the flavor is so rich and round if you spot this bottle in your spirit store to me it's an immediate buy uh that that mix of caramel toffee depth but with the the big punch that you're just not going to get in the core lineup so and, and that's really what i was about to ask because you know tasting the green river rye i'm already like i'm like when i when i i had a taste of it i say these folks are their single barrel are going to be killers yep if they if they pull this rye into a single barrel yep. i'm pushing my grandma on the on way <laughs> to it. it's a, this is this is going to be this is going to be one of those i mean it will give you know a single barrel of, of green river rye will give you know yeah um what do you call it my favorite 95 hour i smoke wagon a run for their money every I day so, so it's uh I, I i can't wait to see what what's gonna come up with with uh with green river it feel like it's a new baby that is coming around and everybody like to hold the new baby <laughs> and I hope you know i hope that yeah. you guys keep the spirit of the of the whiskey alive and don't you know don't do too much where yeah. it almost lose its authenticity i'm loving what you guys are doing it and i'm hoping you you keep that spirit alive you know, where where we can all get to it jazz since you've been quiet and uh you know i know you've been you've been you've been jumping i want to know more what is what what is coming up with barstown bourbon company what should we look for as a if you're a regular barstown bourbon company lover what should we look forward to in 2024 uh, from Barstown Bourbon Company. So I'm curious. What am I allowed to talk hey, about? It's I'm a safe like, space. Is, is it? <laughs> 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 I'm afraid I'm gonna like, like, like. I would like to keep my job like, tomorrow. Oh, no, spoilers. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't want to. We already. I already put one spoiler. Yeah, out here. So, <laughs> yeah, I put one spoiler. Yeah, I wasn't allowed, but they gave me the whole the the asset, and I saw it, and I'm like, oh my god, this is one of my favorite. You know, my favorite collab. That's awesome. So shortly before the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, we'll be releasing two new collaborations and people that are coming there will be the first to taste them. But I don't like I really don't know how much I'm supposed to spoil. So first collaboration is here. That. Yeah, yeah. So you, that's that that's, is out on the streets, on exactly. the whiskey streets. And then we'll we'll have a, a wine finish as well. OK, um, am I? Okay. Yeah, no, the wine I, finish and and. Yeah. and a few other single barrels we can talk about. Single yeah. barrels for sure. What I would love for for Jazz to tell everyone listening and Jack is how much Jazz is going to be traveling the country soon and how you can follow her, meet up with her in oh person. Yeah. If, if, if you if you if you don't if you don't know her, I call her I call her the the fierce lady of the internet. <laughs> I uh, I Jack, believe it or not, Jazz, I, I've been I, I I've been following you before you were cool. Oh my God. No, I really appreciate it. I remember yeah. the first time we met and you told me that I looked like an anime character and I was yes. like, you're so, going to be friends. So the, the, funny thing, the funny thing here is that ja when, I, when I saw Jazz the first time, I literally thought she looked, and for this is for my anime nerds, <laughs> there is, there is, there is a, an anime called Hunter Hunter and Hunter Hunter has the first, was actually in anime history, the first black family that is a guardian of all the secret combat art of all the big hunters of this universe. And there was the mom, the grandmother, the grandfather, and their daughter. And the daughter 
looked exactly like I showed her pic the, the, the picture of the anime <laughs> and it's literally her it pinned down with the hair coming exactly how her hair look right now. And she looked like the character. When I saw her, I kept staring. I was like a creep. I kept <laughs> staring at her because I'm like, oh my God, that's this character in real life. And I kept looking at her. I said, okay, I don't want to be a creep. But you look like this person that I've always, you know, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. But yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, um, her, she is she's jazz that distilled. Yes. On Beyonce's internet. You look <laughs> her up. Uh, she makes fun content. If you're not ready for fun content, don't follow her. But she makes <laughs> fun content. Thank you. And, Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, tell us, tell us all your endeavors you're gonna jump on. Maybe then we'll take a, a break from traveling yeah. all around the world and you get to replace them. Exactly. So a big part of my schedule is built by invitation. So I've been getting invited places to do art of blending. I do a sensory experience where we pair fragrances with the bourbons. I had a cocktail scientist out of Detroit, Michigan, custom make us fragrances that coincide with each of the origin bottles so we can nice. smell and taste through. Um, and Really, I've just been on this big bourbon adventure. I'm so excited to educate. I'm so excited to learn. Last month, I was sent to seven states. This month, I'll be in six. And I've—I don't know. I'm just—I'm almost follow, follow her journey with all that jazz that distill. Follow her journey. Is is not every day somebody can say I know the brand ambassador of a of a brand. They are usually uppity people. So <laughs> jazz is you know jazz. <laughs> Okay, just joking. <laughs> but <laughs> all of these bread ambassadors think they're the, you know, yeah. the, the 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 thing, you know, the yeah. I like to call it the Saint Nitouche. But yes, you, uh, Jazz is very approachable. She she makes bourbon fun, and that's what I liked uh, since the first day I met her. I didn't even know she was the bread ambassador. I just liked the person and how they were talking about whiskey. And beside the anime character thing, I was just impressed by how you were talking about whiskey and the sensory experience you were doing in a lab coat for me was kind of cool uh, when you were actually giving that presentation. So uh, Barstown Bourbon Company has a lot of talent. I, I promise you, if you look at their team, A1 talent wise, if you are in Louisville or you are in Barstown, Barstown definitely. The building itself is so impressive. If you're thinking about starting a bourbon company or a whiskey brand, they are also an option for you to reach out to. They may actually, they may help you bring your 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 dreams to reality, right? Uh, and and they they are not afraid to actually step out of the normal line to bring you something different. So either it's Barstown Bourbon Company or it's Green River Innovation. Collaboration is all they live for. Then, if there's one thing you want the people that are coming into in this whiskey industry or that have been here for a while uh, to know that I did not ask in this interview, what would it be? Mm, that's such a good question, Jay. Mm -hmm. I, uh, what I would encourage people is, is if you've heard about Bardstown and you're excited about what we're doing, I would love for you to bring a bottle to your next get together because as, as much as, as we feel like we're making headway, we're still very much the little guy and, and um, at the very beginning of our runway. So I know we've, we've talked big about everything we're doing and what we're creating, but I would love if anyone's listening, just, just spread the word, come see us in Bardstown, come experience it for yourself. There's nothing better than coming and seeing our distillery hanging out for the day. It's hard to impress me, and they did. I'm just telling you, I'm a hard customer. I'm a hard sell. And <laughs> Barstown Bourbon Company, I, I have not met any of my follower, any of the people I know that say, hey, I'm going to Kentucky. Where should I stop at? I say, okay, start, drive all the way past everybody, start a Barstown <laughs> Bourbon Company, and then start driving your way down to Heaven Hill and other places. But start there first. And then, and then you can you can go down. Yes. So, Jazz, what do you want the folks to know? You know, I think Dan covered it. But I, my main thing would be if you haven't come into the downtown tasting room or the distillery, definitely visit them. And I really recommend visiting both. First of all, each one has single barrels that the other one doesn't get. But second mm -hmm. of all, both of them are part of who we are. And 
you can only fully understand us if you, if you witness both. I will tell you right now, this is actually, like I said, then, then, then you are, you are a very beloved guy on an average. I see about 75 people going through, uh, the show when we're making it for about an hour, an hour and 10. So far right now, we had approximately 275 people that want to this interview just just to come and say hello to you and just to come check you out uh this is the most constant 30 people constantly watching at all time that i've ever seen in any of my show usually fluctuate between five people constantly working and people going in and out before the last hour we had 35 people constantly connected watching from the beginning to end and as a whole over 250 people that stopped by in the live and that does not count the people on uh linkedin this is just facebook instagram and mm -hmm. facebook uh youtube and i'm seeing my my twitter is going wild right now everybody, <laughs> everybody is retweeting and actually liking the interview is it is a sentiment to what your brand is a lot of people can claim to be good but not a lot of people can claim that they connect with folks and a lot of people connect uh with folk you see i have people here in omaha people down on facebook people are commenting just because yeah. they just want to put their hand and one of the things that you do uh Moise is, is, is a good friend of mine yeah. and he's very selective he, he, about the bourbon he drink or the whiskey he drinks and even him was impressed and it's just a sentiment to who you guys are whatever you all are doing i tell you right now awesome. keep doing it keep pushing for it what Sometimes, you know, um, actions speak louder than words. And me, from your action, I can clearly see that you guys are doing what you need to do to make sure that you stay in the pocket and bring something new to the folks. Thanks. I'm, I'm honored to have you here. I'm honored that you guys spend the evening with me. Um, he is Danny. She is jazz they represent green river and barstown bourbon company both companies here and uh make sure you follow them uh make sure you you'll be jealous of them anyway <laughs> I follow him. He, he's, he's he's everywhere you know he he will give you he will, he will you just you end up just not liking him because he's literally he's he's always on the road seeing amazing thing and doing amazing things so if you really want to see the word vicar live vicariously through somebody follow them you'll be surprised of what you see and that's how i know future collaboration that'll happen once i see dan in an odd place holding something <laughs> and whiskey, i'm like ah, ah, something interesting is happening so uh for all of you guys here we appreciate you being here if you're watching the recast make sure you go check out jazz you go check out dan and make sure you actually go check out barstown berman company and if you are a group looking for your next single barrel pick, make sure you reach out to them. You'll be surprised what they may have in store for you. This ride with the sherry thing, this ride right here, this thing right here, that's that's going to be the bombshell of 2025. So I need you all to get on this. If your group has been, has been lacking and looking for something to excite the group as a single barrel, this is going to... This is gonna this is gonna break some heart once people start <laughs> this. It's gonna break some heart. So I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for being here. People are watching, people are still watching. We have not lost anybody in the train. People are are are, are pinned to this, and I advise you to go check them out. And um Danny, I hope to see you soon uh, when yep. I'm in town and I hope to visit you very much soon and uh and make sure that we actually we actually uh jump in. Oh yeah, you see a yeah, lot of people want to see idea. everything. Fantastic you know? idea. Good one, people, Alpha. people want to see everything. And I and I think if there's somebody that can do it, it's y'all. Yeah. Come not, we'll, we'll dive into some barrels. Come correct. Come to correct. So for all of you guys here, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here. If you're on LinkedIn, Facebook, obviously if you're on LinkedIn, I'll make sure I go in on LinkedIn jazz. I'll I'll tag you on it as well. So you actually uh people know who you are. Um I'm happy. Uh, that you guys are doing what you're doing. I'm excited that we've done this. And um, if people have questions, Danny, you, I know where to find you. I'll make sure I'll make sure I reach out and uh, we can answer the folks. Um, thank you all so much. And we'll see y'all 
next time.